My name is Steve Mann, and uh, this is an ITAP device. Uh, in effect, it kind of causes the eye itself to function as both a camera and a display. So it, it looks sort of like I have a glass eye here uh, because in, in the uh, eyeward bound rays of light are diverted through this camera system that looks this way, and then there's a computer controlled laser light source on the other side that redraws the image with infinite depth of focus or infinite depth of field. And so this is uh, what I refer to as a generation four glass. When I was about four years old, I learned how to weld, and I was looking through dark glass, and I understood the world looking through glass, kind of seeing the world that way. And um, so then I experimented in my childhood in the 1970s with a lot of different kinds of glass and, and, and imaging and seeing uh, through this concept of wearable computing, uh, putting computing on the body to help us understand our sensory environment better. And so one of the things that I came up with early on was this notion of capturing different exposures of the same subject matter and merging them together, something called HDR imaging. Another uh, concept uh, that, that I, I came up with is that um, I noticed that as I tried to see the world better and understand the world better with a seeing aid or vision aid, that a lot of times security guards would look at me or complain or something and say, you know, be upset because I had, had this camera that actually wasn't recording anything but just trying to help me see better. But then uh, because of those encounters, I started to think, wait a minute, you know, they got all these surveillance cameras watching us. And so surveillance means to watch from above. In, in French, sur means from above and vele means to watch. So surveillance, the closest English word is oversight. The word oversight is the closest English word to the French word surveillance. I coined a new term, uh, surveillance or undersight, you know, to describe this kind of reverse of that. And I thought, well, what we really want to look at, in some sense, is valence. You know, neither surveillance nor surveillance. Basically, if you put cameras on people, you know, if people are holding or wearing cameras, it's surveillance. And if the cameras are on property like buildings, land or buildings, it's, it's surveillance. Totally different. It's, 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 it's a very, very different time for us. Steve Mann was uh, building wearable computers in high school. And I think it's it's perfectly good example that here's a young man that brought with him an idea that was very much on the lunatic fringe, was very much something that people thought, well, this is kind of weird and it doesn't really make sense. And when he arrived here, a lot of people sort of said, wow, this is very interesting, and faculty became more interested, and he, and it's a, I think it's probably one of the best examples we have of where somebody brought with them an extraordinarily interesting seed and then it sort of you know it grew and there are many people now so-called cyborgs in the media lab and uh, people working on wearable computers all over the place what I've got is I've got a computer screen in my glass since I've been experimenting with uh, something uh, what you might call um, wearable computing or personal you know, personal computing. The real thing here is that it replaces a lot of the normal things that we carry, such as camcorder, uh, still camera, um, Walkman, um, pager, cell phone. All of those personal electronics items are subsumed into a single apparatus because, you know, I have a camera built into the glasses so that as I look around, the algorithm that I've developed seamlessly stitches multiple pictures together and makes them into an image composite, something I call painting with looks. All you can see is a pair of sunglasses, but his computer is tucked into his pocket. The frame fitted with a miniature camera. His screen is projected directly onto his retina. If Steve Mann is concerned about preserving a sense of community, it's because he sees what's coming, a wave that's about to break over our society. Computers, wireless communicators, they're no longer just technology, but fashion accessories. As we step out into the future, our wearables in place, our chips implanted within us, 
Will this new world swallow us up, stripping us of autonomy and privacy? Or will it free us in ways we can't imagine? This exhibit is about digital rights management in the real world of wearable computing and augmented reality. Seat Sale examines what happens when you take the concept of software licensing and apply it to the real world. But the real underlying inquiry addresses intellectual property and wearable computing. <laughs> 